No. So welcome everybody to the day two of the NFCore hackathon. Today we'll have a session talking about DSL2 and modules uh, in Nextflow. And we have first a talk by Evan Floden and Paolo Di Tommaso who need no introduction. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna give the stage directly to Evan and he's gonna talk to us about DSL2 for NFCore. Awesome, thanks a lot. Yeah, it's super exciting to, to talk to everyone um, here today. Maybe I'll, I'll do a little small introduction, maybe. So, so I'm Evan, I'm CEO and co-founder of Sakira Labs. Um, I work with Nextflow. Uh, we've also got Paolo on the line. If you don't know Paolo, he's the main developer of, of Nextflow. And as I said, we wanted to just uh, we'll ask to do a, a very small introduction onto, onto DSL2. Um, so if you don't know, DSL2 stands for Domain Specific Language. Too. And it's a and it's an extension of the, the Nextflow language. And the super exciting thing is we've been working on this now for I think almost a couple of years. And um, in the next week or so, so as part of the July release, this will be um, be rolled into um, into the kind of main release of Nextflow. And then for it'll start to become more widely used. As I kind of prefix this, I've been using it now for. Um, probably almost a year now in terms of the main pipelines I've been developing. And I found it like phenomenally powerful, um, exceptionally useful. Uh, and once you get your mind into, into using this way, it's typically the way to go. Um, at the same time, we're still sort of teaching the, from the basics um, of how to use the traditional Nextflow, because I think it's important to get the kind of concepts right to begin with. But to begin with, what I wanted to, what I wanted to go through was um, just to imagine our existing pipeline and if we think about what the data pipeline's got, you can kind of split it into two parts. So you can think that there is the part where each process or each task is trying to do, do a, uh, it's trying to run some piece of software, run some script, do some processing of some data. And then there's the second pass you have, part you have to think about, which is how you connect these things up. So traditionally, it kind of looks kind of basic, like in this example, but as you say, we've seen many times before that if you have very complex examples here, this becomes quite difficult. And what we're sort of thinking about with DSL2 <clears throat> is how you can split these two things up. And in splitting these two things up, it actually helps you write more efficient pipelines or rewrite pipelines more efficiently. So <clears throat> the two parts that I'm talking about here are essentially where you write your code. This is the process block. This is where you focus on the actual task that you need to write, that, you, that the pipeline should run in that moment. And then the second part, is much more related to what the inputs and outputs of those are, that what the channels are, the data flow programming side um, that we see here. And that, is, and that is the separation of these two things is one of the main aspects of, of DSL2, along with several other um, new additions, which can kind of result um, from that change that we're, able to, that we're able to do. So we've been working on this for, for a long time. So it was really one of the more requested features over the years was to be able to add this to Nextflow, be able to modularize the workflow definition, to be able to create independent components, and then to be able to reuse those independent components um, in different workflow projects. So essential the reuse of components was an, it was an exceptionally important um, part and being able to do that with into Nextflow. It also allows us to break up the script. So you think that typical Nextflow pipelines are one massive .nf file. And if we're able to break that up, um, we can kind of split the monolithic script up and use it into both reusable pieces, but also more manageable um, aspects of it. The challenging thing about this is that in Nextflow, the processes um, had the kind of implicitly defined what the inputs and the outputs were. So the execution of the pipeline using these processes was kind of intrinsically linked into what the pipeline was doing. So if we look at, say, so for example here, this is the typical, by, uh, typical example that we use, but consider the, the process here. Notice that the process contains the channels in here. So it contains from genome channel, from reads channel. 
And because these are uh, declared implicitly, they're really also defining the dependencies associated with that task or with that, um, the dependencies associated with that process. So because the process definition implicitly determines how the process will connect to the rest of the workflow, um, it makes it difficult to split up because this reads channel, for example, could be used in another step. And then I can't, for example, define the align sample and the downstream process because consider that the one we saw here, now these two processes are, are linked together. So therefore it makes it very difficult for me to take index sample um, and use it in a different and use it in a different location. So as I said, DSL2 is a major revision of this. It's really focused on the modularization, fluent definition, component reuse. And we've been working so for, for quite a long time to be able to do this. And, and it's very, um, it's kind of great to finally see that over that time, the iterations that have gone on, the time that we've spent working with the community to work on specific aspects of it to, to define it, um, really paid off into to making something um, which is now ready for the stable, so stable release. Okay, so if you've ever used Nextflow before, um, you'll you shouldn't find DSL2 to be too different. It's really a natural extension of what we've got. Um, to keep backwards compatibility, we've added this um, uh, it's, uh, the definition at the start of the script that you use. So if you enable DSL2 like this, then you're able to use DSL2 um, in your in your script. The key thing to note when you look at a DSL2 process is that now we're no longer defining um, what the channel inputs are. So we, the process doesn't need to declare from and into and for that component. And previously we were using from to say where the process was receiving the data. We were using output to say where the data was going to, but we no longer need this anymore. So we just have this original path transcriptome and path index. This should be fairly, uh, fairly standard. So the thing that comes about is now the process definition is no longer tied to a specific channel or data flow. And therefore we can use it independently. So how do we use these independent? How can we take these DSL2 components and then reuse them in a pipeline? Well, this, for example, this index process could be defined in another file and we can include it into a main script. Look at this example here. This is a DSL2 workflow definition we are including the index, oh, we are including the index process from some file, some module that we could have defined. It could contain one or many <clears throat> of these. Um, and then on the workflow step um, here, we could say um, we want to define exactly like you would in Nextflow. So we have a new workflow definition here, but the transcriptome is the same. So this is just defining um, a variable here, the params.transcriptome. This is all standard next for uh, read pairs channel from some file pairs. And the difference now is that we call the processes almost as functions. So instead of having to have include the process block here, we would have a block of the process. We can just name the process and the inputs themselves are in an order that they would be expected by in the process. So transcriptome is, becomes the first input channel to index. Read pairs channel becomes the first uh, input channel to FastQC. And the quant process has two input channels. The first one is the index.out, so the output channel of index process. And the second input is the read pairs channel. Another thing to note here is that with DSL2, we're able to reuse um, channels several times. So we no longer have this limitation of having to split the channels out. I can use read pairs channel here and I can use read pairs channel here um, without having to split it. The other thing to note is the use of this dot out. So with this dot out, I'm able to access the output channel of index without, um, without having to necessarily uh, define it as a variable. And this can have some advantages for just making it uh, simple to see. Okay. We also have a new way of, of actually defining workflows or sub workflows in this case. So we can provide a, a name. We can just see, for example, workflow RNAC. And then we can have these new words for defining what the inputs and the outputs, not only for a process is, but what a, what a workflow is. So we use take, which is the, the word for the kind of input of a workflow. 
So we have the transcriptome read pairs channel as we had before. We can then have the main section, which is what is executed. So index, fast QC and quant, exactly the same as before. And then the output of the sub workflow can then be defined with this emit, um, uh, with the submit keyword here. So this is a um, quant.out. Final thing um, I'll show you, and then I'm gonna pass you on to Paolo who will do a full demo of how we can convert a, a pipeline um, to, to DSL2. We also have the ability to use pipes here. And what this is saying is that we can define, um, we can write our workflow now no longer um, sort of all on one, all one, one line, we can pipe the outputs of processes, of operators, um, to the input of the next step. So imagine this example here. I'm looking now in the workflow block. So the channel dot from path params in. This is creating a channel, uh, which is containing our input. I'm gonna pipe the, that channel to split faster, which is a next flow operator, which is gonna split the faster up. That The output of that operation will then be piped to the align process. So that align process will run for each element which is emitted from that channel. And then finally, I can pipe it to the view operator to view the output of that. So this is a kind of a neat syntax that we can have to really powerfully use um, the concept of Linux pipes and really use the expressiveness that, that comes about from using Linux and apply it to now distributed computation um, with Nextflow. So with that, I'll pass you over to Paolo, who will do a um, more of a demo and, and hands on into how we can use this and, and the basic concepts behind it. Nice. Let me share the screen. OK. Yes, the idea is that <clears throat> to, to show you how to migrate a, a small pipeline a small or a big pipeline to this new syntax, I'm going to use our a uh, small RNSC uh, pipeline that we be, we've used for, for demoing purpose. That is this uh, this repository, Nextflow.io RNSC. <clears throat> I have a local copy. And I think most of you already seen this, but if you have never seen, there are just uh, small for, for task. And there is at the beginning some parameter definition for the read, transcript, tom, the output dir, et cetera. Then just a, um, a, log, uh, a log info that shows some, some runtime information, some, some, uh, some information about the input, the pipeline. Then there is uh, the read pairs uh, channel definition with the usual trick to split the channel to for the limitation uh, on Nextflow to, 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 to manage multiple inputs, the same channel has multiple inputs. And then there is a task for the index creation using Salmon, then the quantification step always using Salmon, the fast QC step, and then finally multi, 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 multi QC that collects all the outputs and create uh, the, the, the final report. So <clears throat> the first thing to enable uh, DSL2 syntax is to declare the, this flag at the beginning to make it possible uh, to, to, to allow Nextflow to use both syntaxes without breaking existing code. So this is an opt-in feature that must be enabled using this flag. The final, uh, the final version preview will be replaced with enable but for now, we can just use preview. And um, this is enough to, to tell next so that you want to use this new syntax. So uh, like Evan was mentioning, it's not a radical new syntax for next flow, but there are a few changes that allow us to, to make um, many more things. And the first thing was to remove all the from declaration from the processes because this will allow us to reuse this process definition uh, in multiple places like an independent model. So we have just to remove all the from part. And this basically 
make it possible to use now the processes like the definition, the task that I want to execute, but without linking them each other. So they are independent modules, basically. And the same way, I need to remove the into definition, including this. This was, I will enter more in detail about into later about this part, but we have to remove also this, then all the process into definition. Here, okay, we are done. So now we have the task. And, but if I try to run this, it's doing nothing because what is happening now? Or, um, yeah. Because I don't have any more. Okay, it's telling that there is a report, but actually it's down editing. Because I, I have just a task definition, but there is no, um, not declaration how we want to use there because before we had the, the the definition the from into there was creating the relationship between the tasks. Now this does not exist anymore, but we can use, let's remove this because we don't need for now. We have the ability to declare a new component that is workflow that is what allow us to recombine all these tasks together. And for example, uh, I want to start using the index like before. Now, since I declared in the index task one input, what I have to do is to use the process index passing the input that uh, I declared in the process definition. So here I know that I can pass the parameter transcript on. So basically the process become like custom function that I can invoke inside the workflow scope. This is what uh, DS2 allows you to do, to, to reuse the processes like function, custom function that run your, your task. It is, is enough to run this workflow. Running, let's use Docker. I also resume, no, we don't resume. This will run the first task. And now, basically, what I have to do is to recreate the pipeline, recombining the task like before. So I uh, uh, index, then I can use the fast QC task. The fast QC was declaring, declaring the read pairs. And um, this is what I was doing here in the channel declaration with the into, there isn't any more in the SL2, the into operator, but I can use just this channel. Another advantage of the SL2 not, is not just about modularization tasks, but also it removes the need to, to split the channel when I have to reuse multiple places. So make the, the, the syntax much more readable with less uh, declaration, the same different channel name for the same channel. So much more uh, concise. I can use read pairs here and now I can run it again. Okay. Now I have execute two task. I'm still executing it. And then I have the quantification task, quantification task is taking the index generated by the previous index task and then the read pairs. So how now I can combine these two things? I can express in different way, but the simplest way that uh, you can use is to use the process name to reference the output that it produced. So here I can say that index, I want to take the output index using this implicit variable that we can apply in the index task. So I'm telling invoke the quantification passing like first argument, the output of the index invocation. 
And since it's taking a second parameter that, they, that is the read pairs, I can just use the same read pairs channel. So we can here, this line, we are seeing two powerful features in the SL2. The way to reference the output of, of, a, of a process, just say process name dot out, and then reusing the same channel two more times without having to split the channel like we had to do before with the into. So it's much easier, much more readable. Let's do resume now. Here it is. And finally, we have the multi QC task. The multi QC was a bit more complicated because it's taking the first parameter that was receiving all the output from the fast QC and quantification task. And we can do the same thing that we were doing before by using the new syntax. The new syntax would be that I want to take fast QC output mix like before to what? To the quantification task out and collect. This was the same snippet that I had in the, in the previous implementation, but just adapted uh, to, to the ability that I have now to, to use the process name to access to the output of that process name. But then I continue to use the same operator mix, the same operator collect, etc. And the second one was just the parameter multi QC, I think, no? Let's try to resume. Fantastic. So these few lines show one of the, 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 the main feature of ESL2, the ability to, to, the, to, to use process like a some function, how we can reuse the same channel multiple, ta multiple times and how we can access to the output or process using this, this notation. In this way, we can isolate the main logic of the pipeline uh, in a much more uh, concise way, allow us to, to read this piece without having to recreate mentally uh, the, 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 the link between all the, the processes. So much easier to, to read, the, especially when you have a, a complex logic in your pipeline. But still, we haven't seen how to create separate models because I just readapted this pipeline to use the new syntax by still not using just a single file. So all the point was to create models. How to create models? I can just take all the processes and include it in a separate file, uh, RNA tasks. Enough. Oops, there is too many else. And that is uh, an extra model is just, uh, just an extra script that contains uh, processes declared using the new syntax. So without into a from. Now, uh, since here I'm declaring some parameter, I have to declare like I will do in any other next script these parameters with a default value result, so nothing changed. This is the usual thing. But now I can include this RNA task script from the main pipeline. How? Using include and then specifying the name of the processes that I want to include. So index, fastqc, uh, quantification, and multiqc. Oh, uh, no worries, why is not taking the other complete? Then I need to specify which is the script part, that is RNA tasks. The extension is not needed. Instead, the dot slash is mandatory and you have to specify or a relative part like this or an absolute part starting this way. 
And uh, also there were some versions in which this was allowed, meaning include everything, but we decided to remove because that was easy to allow to include everything, but made very difficult to understand when you have many inclusion from where the processes are coming from. Also, uh, the curly bracket notation was optional, but the final version, this is going to be uh, the only way to define the inclusion, even if you have just a single inclusion like this, to make the syntax a, a bit more consistent to a different way to include uh, things with curly brackets, without curly brackets. So the inclusion is always with curly brackets like this. Okay, I think it's enough to, to run it again. And uh, fantastic, now I have the same pipeline in which the main body of the pipeline are just 50 lines. Uh, it, it is this, include the task. Then there is a channel uh, declaration that I could even put inside here. And then the workflow body. And the nice part is this, that I can use this task in the, as a separate module that I can include into different script. And um, also a nice thing that I can create modules, components, that are not just single tasks like this, but also sub workflows, how to do? Well, just using uh, this notation, maybe I want to create a sub workflow that does always uh, the index, the fast QC, the quantification execution. What I have to do into this file on a separate file, does not matter, it just declare a workflow to which I can give an A. Maybe Ernest like pipe. I want to do, instead of invoking task QC, I want to just, our have this like a piece, a, a component that they can reuse. The problem is now how to isolate the parameter and the output. This can become uh, input of the Zoom workflow using this T keyword that is the equivalent for the input that we are declaring in the, in the process. In the workflow, instead is TIG and and allows you to declare an identifier then you will use like the input for the index and also another input is the read period channel. Then start the body of the pipeline and then maybe you want to return uh, this output from the pipeline execution and to declare the output and the pipeline, you can use emit. So what I have done, we are creating a sub workflow that takes this to the input, run three, these three tasks, and then we produce, like before, the, uh, the combination, the fast QC output and the quantification step output. Let's try in action. I can, include now the RNSIC pipeline from this file. Uh, this confused me, confused me a bit here, I will put here. And then, so now instead of calling this, I can call RNSIC pipe, passing uh, parents from Python and Repair CH like before. And now, multi QC takes what? Takes Renesic out, and then, like before, the parameters of uh, a parameter file from multi, multi QC. This is enough. Um, so we, we can isolate piece of workflow in this way. Let's try to run it. There it is. 
Now our executive for Scratch because the namespace of the execution will change. If you notice now, the, 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 this process become RNSC pipe index, RNSC pipe fast QC, et cetera. And then the last one is multi -QC. So basically they are nested inside an, an, um, a namespace. And um, what else? The last thing that is nice to mention is already was already mentioned by by Evan maybe a couple of minutes to about this is the this pipe uh, notation that we have. Um, the pipe notation allows you to concatenate over either a processes together in a bit more readable way that it can be maybe uh, more intuitive, especially since we are used to, to work with best, uh, the best syntax and Linux syntax. It's just a way to combining uh, the operator using the pipe notation also into an extra script. So basically I could say that the fast QC out is piped to the mix operator since the mix operator was taking also an argument, we continue to use the parenthesis notation here, but then the output the mix goes into collect. I don't need any more the empty uh, the parenthesis when there is no argument. And now uh, it's a bit more readable because we are saying that the workflow is producing this output that is fast QC output mixed with the quantification output, and that collect everything. Uh, the only suggestion is try to not abuse to, to use this, this notation. I have seen some people trying to write 20 lines or, or script new concatenating all tasks together. Maybe that, uh, that would make a, too, too complicated to hear it, but having small one-liner, I think is nice to, 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 to make the, 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 the code more readable. The last thing, uh, the, the, um, the workflow can produce one output or more output, and you can give also a name to this, assigning uh, them to a variable. So if I do something like that, then I will be able to access the Ernestic pipe output using this, uh, this notation. So the name that I use here into the emit section, but also I could say that uh, I want to return what? The quantification result using quantification out and maybe the fast QC result assigning to the fast QC out. So now basically my, my component, my sub workflow, Ernestic pipe produce three output and then I can choose which one I want to use or all together or maybe just fast QC result. Okay, these are the main, uh, the main feature of NextFlow DSL2 and uh, the ability to create separate models or library or, or task and processes itself workflow that can be uh, included each other, but also the ability to use this pipe notation and also the ability to, to reuse the same channel in different places without, without having to, to uh, to, to use the into operator to create copy, uh, make the, the resulting uh, script much more readable, much more uh, concise. And I think this is also why at some point we decided to, to call this DSL2 because it is um, a little change in the syntax, but at the same time, the impact that provides is so big that uh, is going to, to provide a complete new experience when when write pipeline with, with next row. Okay, this concludes my, my demo. Uh, I don't know if we have time for a question in the chat or whatever. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Paolo, for this hands-on demonstration. This will really help us 
port all our workflows to DSL2. And thank you, Evan, also for the introduction. And yeah, we do have some time for questions now, and we actually already have some questions in the chat. Fantastic. Um, open the chat. Yeah, I, I can read them out loud as well for the YouTube followers. So we have a question from Moritz. Um, since workflows can now reside in a separate module, it is kind of natural to start versioning them in separate repositories. Can we import from a repository URL? Um, okay, module? yes, this is a um, uh, classic question. Uh, the short answer is no, because at least not in the basic uh, form that you can specify from a URL, because that is very dangerous for the stability of the pipeline. It was one of the biggest failure, right? In the first generation of workflow engine that was allowed to import data or script from a remote repository. We know that this repository change over time. So that will make the pipeline super fragile as soon as this URL breaks. The idea is to instead to uh, include external dependencies from, for example, using Git uh, sub project or Git modules, and also another ex possible extension, which the NF core is working very uh, heartily, is to create a way to create a, a NF core modules that will be possible to, to resolve uh, use the NF core tools. Maybe feel uh, more details about this. Yes, exactly. This talk will be followed by a talk by Phil and he will explain more details about this. Exactly. But not, uh, not directly using a level next law language. Exactly, yeah. So we have another question. I like the pipe feature. Will it be possible to pipe like in Bash, see the final output row by row, or does each process need to finish before the next one starts? Um, not sure to understand well, the, 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 the question. So, uh, Rupert? I think the question goes down to it. It's yeah. actually operating exactly like Nextflow. So when there is a pro switch process which has, for example, 100 tasks, it's actually operating in the exact same way as, as Nextflow running the thing. So it's, it's happening in parallel and it doesn't have to wait for one of them to finish. Um, it doesn't have to wait for one process to finish before the next one begins. So it's, it's the full workflow definition exactly like you have. Okay, perfect. I hope that this answers the question. Does somebody else have some other questions? Please write them to the chat. So from Steve, the new DSL2 and module system resembles some aspects of CWL workflows. Do you think we might be able to use CWL tool definitions at some point using this? Uh, in principle, it is possible. We had also a, a tentative to, to implement a CWL importing uh, to run into Nextflow DSL to CWL task, but uh, we didn't have enough time to go into uh, a real implementation. So there is a kind of proof of principle of this approach uh, that may that show that it is possible but uh, it's nothing used about this point. Maybe at some, some, some point uh, we will implement this. Perfect, thank you. Some further questions? So even if you have some further questions later, so at the end of all the talks, we will have a discussion session. So you can also continue asking your questions there. And 